Hey everyone, welcome back to Yellow Jacket Garage. Um, today, we're doing brakes. Again. Um, there, at some point in time, I have to run out of brake jobs to do. It just, it's just the way it has to be. I'm, you know, hopefully, please. No, but seriously, having fun. This one's a little bit different because we're going to do the brakes on the uh, 62 Corvette. We're doing the rear brakes on this one, and that's all today's video is going to be is uh, the rear brakes because I did the passenger side already, so full disclosure there, um, I know what I'm in for, and this is going to be a hoot. So let's dive into this project. Okay, so uh, what I want to do first is I'm going to start by disassembling, but I want to go over real quick kind of what the whole process is that we're doing is I'm going to disassemble. We're going to take off this uh, brake drum. Let's see if it'll come off without any. That was almost too easy. So set that down here. And then um, in here, we'll get closer here in a second. There's four bolts that we're going to have to pull. And what that does is that retains the uh, bearing inside the actual housing and then we can pull it out. This, di this differential does not have uh, the C-clips inside in the center section and so this one is all retained on the outer side. And so you pull that uh, little retainer out and then coax the, uh, the whole axle that comes out as one piece. And so what I'm going to do first though is I'm going to disassemble the brakes so we can get down to the backing plate and have nothing but the backing plate sitting here while we're doing this. And so let me, uh, let me get the camera in here a little bit closer so we can show you how to do this. Okay, like uh, we've got the, the drum off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start by taking these retaining keepers off first. And what these springs do, well, you know what, let me do this. I'll do it, I'm kind of trying to do it backwards and I, and I shouldn't do it backwards. But uh, I need to take these, uh, these springs off first so that they don't come blasting off too much. Come on. Make sure I get that in there. This little tool has a little cam on the bottom side of it that There we go. And uh, I was kind of doing it backwards. But this cam grabs the inside of the spring end. Careful putting your fingers in these things, boys and girls, because uh, they can bite you. Anyway, this cam grabs a hold of the spring, kind of like so. But it doesn't want to grab this spring very well, and so that's why I'm going to use this uh, tool. Sometimes these will come blasting off there, so be careful. Watch your eyes and all that, all that safety stuff. But there we go. Once they come off, pull the retainers. These things come off pretty easy. There's the little hat that holds the spring on top. There goes the spring. We're not reusing any of that stuff, and so we're going to get rid of all of it. And uh, these brakes are relatively new. Yep, yep, pull that apart. They, well, it's, it's odd. They replaced the brakes. They replaced all the shoes and everything, but they didn't replace the wheel cylinders, which is this part right here. When you push your brake pedal, the fluid comes down, comes across the center here, and comes right onto, into this deal here, which is the wheel cylinder. That pressurized fluid pushes out on these rods here and it makes your brakes expand out like that so you stop. If you're going to go to the trouble of pulling all of this apart, these are only a few dollars. Just replace the dang things. But, I, 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 I don't know, do stuff on the cheap and sometimes you'll wish that you hadn't. Because, of course, it's going to fail on you when you least expect it and most need it. So that's all apart. This is the back side of the retaining bolts. What these do is these hold 
the backing plate and everything, the axle, backing plate, the whole nine yards, onto the axle housing back here. And so I'm kind of just going to clean those up just a little bit to keep crap from going everywhere, even though it still is. Oh, this is a neat thing. I want to talk about this real quick. Your uh, brake springs that go in there that hold the brake shoes up against the backing plate have this little cool deal. It looks like a little nail. And so you see the head of the nail, but the end of it is all mashed out kind of. And so what that does is it comes through the backing plate here and where the spring and everything is. Let me grab that. This is that little hat that I was talking about. There's a notch in the hat. It goes this way, goes through, and then it turns. And then there's a little kind of a notch that the, uh, the flat sits in. You can see the, the opening and then whatever you call that, not perpendicular to the opening. Is that the right word? Perpendicular? Yeah. It's a funny word, isn't it? Perpendicular. Anyway, perpendicular to the opening, there's a little indentation. And when it turns, it sits down in there. The spring pressure keeps it pushed out. And the point to that is to keep the brake shoes back against the backing plate. And you can see right here and over here is kind of where they sit and run. Those are the just the contact points. And so sometimes when you have squeaky brakes, because that metal on metal, that's why you have squeaky brakes. So that's your tech tip for the day. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a break, get set up with tools to make sure I have the right sockets and everything ready to go so I can pull those out. And uh, I'm also going to put a drain pan underneath it because when I pull this axle out, we may have some uh, gear oil that comes out with it. And that stuff is nasty and it's smelly and it's the worst substance ever created by humankind. But anyway, um, I don't want to get it all over the shop floor. So we'll be back in a minute. Okay, we've been screwing around here for a little while, trying to knock these bolts here loose, these ones. And this one back here is kind of behind the shackle and everything else. So if you're going to pull these apart, be prepared for this one to be um, a rip roar in good time because uh, we had to turn the camera off because uh, you don't want to hear my language when I have to do stuff like that. No, I'm just kidding. Sort of. Not really. Um, but anyway, these ones are kind of a bear to get to, but once all four of these bolts come out, the axle will come out with a little bit of encouragement. And uh, we'll get to that here in just a second. But I wanted to cover that real quick so that you could see that these are the ones that are a bear to get to. You're going to need something thin wall to get onto those nuts. And uh, what we wound up having to do is do a thin wall. And then we uh, used a vice grip on that thin wall socket to use it like a wrench. So I know they probably make thin wall wrenches and everything else, but uh, I don't have those. So we get to do with what we got. So, and I suspect that a lot of us that are doing this in the garage aren't going to have that stuff either. And so that's kind of the whole point here is to learn how to do it, to get it done and be able to get access to what you need to get access to with what you've got on hand. Okay, and these are the other side of these bolts. This is what I was talking about earlier in the video. This is the, uh, um, the bearing retainer, and it's bolts all the way around. The bearing is inside here, and it pinches it into the axle, and I'll show you that here once we get this apart. But uh, that's what they talk about with the bearing retainer, and so that's kind of the bigger piece to tear apart. We'll get that out of there, and uh, we'll show you here in a minute. Okay, we've gone ahead and pulled all four of the bolts, the retaining bolts, out of the back side of it. And so now we're ready to go ahead and pull the axle out. Um, I haven't pulled the brake line yet. I want to get a little bit better access once the brake, the, the backing plate is loose. But all I need to do is kind of ease that, uh, the axle out. And so I'm, what I've done is taken the, the brake drum, three of the lug nuts, turn it around, and just kind of go... And nope, it does not want to move quite yet. And so, I am going to go in here and kind of gently push against the retainer here. Really, really, really gently pry against it. You don't want to put a whole lot of pressure. You don't want to bend that because it needs to be what it is. I'm, I'm kind of getting close to where the bolts are. And yep, it is. It is loose. I could see it. Because I got my fat head in the way. 
and there is a little bit of a gasket in there that uh, wants to try to thwart your attempts at removal because why not all right it might be loose enough now It is moving. Because this is all separate here. The top is the only part. And so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to hit that gasket to convince it that it doesn't want to be stuck to it anymore. And so, and if this doesn't work this time, I'm gonna pull, the, pull it back off get back in there with a wire brush and clean that gasket up a little bit and do a little bit of gentle prying with it but i know that the bearing is already moving because you can see it back around here let me see if we can see that get the light over here but I mean, you can see where it's separated here and so it's starting to come apart but up here is where it's still stuck Yeah, let's uh, pull this off, get it out of the way, and we'll do a little bit more cleaning up on it and kind of pry on it that way. I don't want to bang on it too much with it being up on the, up on the lift, sorry about that, only because I'd rather not have it uh, fall off the lift. Okay, I've got the uh, drum back on, and back here I did get the... Uh, the retainer all the way loose and uh, what I did is I took a flat bladed screwdriver and gently tapped in around it with a hammer just to break it loose but paying attention to make sure I didn't bend it and so now the axle is starting to move out and so let's see if we can just do a couple of quick pops and it is moving but not as fast as I'd like it to nope so what we're going to do now, because I don't want to do that too much, I'm going to actually smack the backing plate a couple of times with a hammer and get it to move out. Okay, so we got the axle to move all the way out. However, the uh, using the uh, drum didn't work, and so I went and got the Persuasion. It's a 10-pound slide hammer, so if you don't have one of these, you can get one at Harbor Freight for like 30 bucks. Something like that. I don't know exactly how much they are. Had that thing for about 30 years, so. But now we're just gonna kinda persuade it to come the rest of the way out. Just like so. We're gonna sit it right there for a second. Put the hammer down. I'm gonna sit this back up on there just so that it's out of the way. Well, I pull the axle out, there we go. And that's why there was a little bit of rust in there. So we may discuss uh, replacing this bearing because there was rust inside there that was holding it on. Now on this side here, this is what I was talking about. Um, sometimes that the gear oil will come out. Yeah, that's kind of kind of grody but uh, not terrible. I did spray it down with some WD-40 to, to try to get in there, to try to kind of get that out of there. I want to get any chunks out of there that are, that are there. That's what I was looking at, it's right here. It's a little bit rough right in there, but that's okay, that's not the bearing race, but something, um, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say at some point in the life of this differential, somebody broke an axle because that's what that looks like right there is witness marks from an axle bouncing around in there because it goes all the way around and it's down on the bottom side and so i'm willing to bet you that that's why that has those marks right there because this is the land for the bearing race it should ride against that that's your machine surface that looks good 
Let's uh, get that backing plate off of there and out of the way. And so, there we have it. It is cleaned up, uh, or at least disassembled. That's as far down as we disassemble it. Now, for the rest of this process, we're gonna go ahead and clean up the bearing, uh, clean all that stuff up there, get it ready for reassembly. With reassembly, then we'll go over that with those parts. But uh, for right now, I think we're done for the day. I'm gonna let it sit, and uh, maybe overnight the, uh, the brake fairies will come in and put it all back together. Right. But anyway, so that's it for today. Okay, so it uh, is the next day from the last part of the video. As you can tell, I changed my shirt, so it's a whole new day. Basically, i got a few different things going on around here, and so I'm kind of getting to this as I can. But I wanted to take a minute and show you, according to the instructions on this, the, uh, let me pull that back so you can see it, the wheel bearing retainer, which is this flange here, needs to be trimmed back just a little bit on both the top and the bottom side. And so I'm going to kind of make a little bit of a line right here on the top. And here in a minute, I'm going to grab the uh, cutoff tool. And we're going to trim that back just a smidge. Oops, that's a little bit too far. And then uh, basically what I'm doing is just clearancing it a little bit. So that the uh, the brake itself will fit on over, but of course it goes the other way. But uh, we want to make sure that this fits over, so that it clearances everything that it needs to clearance inside here, so that this part will go on and sit the way it is supposed to, according to the manufacturer's instructions on this brake kit. And so what that entails is taking the grinder and just removing a little bit of material off this side and off of this side so that it does clearance the way it's supposed to. Now I'm wrapping the bearing and all of this in uh, the paper towel so that I can keep any metal debris or anything else out of that bearing because we want to keep it as clean as we possibly can while we're doing this. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and do this and then I'll come back and show you what I've done because uh, using the air grinder, which is pretty loud and uh, might be kind of boring. Okay, got that all done. Um, got it trimmed off on the side here. Get my uh, grinder out of the way, and I trimmed it off on the side here. And basically, what we want to do is make sure that it kind of fits in, and so that it clears these parts in here that uh, where you do the brake adjustment and whatnot, and for these screws here that adjust that uh, are in there. And that's what we're trying to clearance, and so. That goes in there, and that goes in there, and it seems to me like we should be all right right there. So I think we've got that cleared up. Okay, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and uh, get that junk there. I'm going to go ahead and knock the. Uh, the lug studs out and replace those. I'm going to do that before I put the axle back in because it's a lot more accessible right now than it will be once it's uh, all reassembled in the car. And once the brakes and everything are on it, this is almost impossible to get to. So let's do it here before we uh, do that. And basically, all I'm going to do is take a hammer and just tap these out. 
just like so, and, and they pop right out. And that's it, all those studs are out. Let me go grab the new studs, we'll push them back in, and drive them all the way back in, and then we'll be ready to reassemble this thing. So I grabbed a 516th Allen wrench, that's what size these are. And my whole point to it is I don't want to tighten it all down just yet, I just want to snug it, snug it up a little bit so that I can make sure that the nuts don't fall back off. I can work on the other side and get it all back together. And so I know that that one is on there tight enough. So I'm going to go ahead and instead of boring you with the rest of this, you've kind of seen how it goes. I'm going to go ahead and um, get the other stuff started, probably tighten it all down and then come back and show you where we're at from there. If I run into any difficulties, well then I'll go ahead and turn the camera back on and show you whatever that fresh hell is so uh, I do anticipate some because so far this project has been wrought with just little things just because they're such tight spaces so let me go ahead and get into this I'm not gonna bore you with that and so we'll be back as soon as we're back all right it's on there it's all tightened down now what I want to do is because I've been working around here with grubby grimy hands and everything I just want to give the give it a quick spritz down with some brake parts cleaner. Make sure that uh, any grimy crap that might have been on my hands that got onto that stuff has washed off. Now that can is about done, so I'll put it over there. Let that dry up a little bit, and then uh, go ahead and put the rotor on it. Once the rotor goes on. Then we'll mount the caliper. Now these rotors have multiple patterns so we can figure out which one fits, which is that one right there. Putting the caliper on is really pretty simple. I'm gonna leave the pin and everything in there for right now. Once the pads go in for there, once we uh, actually set it all up and everything, We'll pull that pin, put the pads in, put the pin back through, and it's a big cotter pin, so then we'll just bend the ends to hold the, uh, the to re retain the pads back in there. Okay, so now we are ready to put the caliper on. Um, I know because of doing the other side, yeah, I pre-gamed it, um, we're going to need two shims between the caliper and the uh, caliper bracket, and so I went ahead and put the two shims on, put the bolt on, and now I'm going to throw the shims on the floor because that seems like the right thing to do. Stuff happens, folks. Stuff happens. All right. For this caliper, it's really pretty simple. It goes in. Get that bolt to start in there. And that caliper is hung. I'm going to go ahead and... Let me uh, move the camera. Hang on a second. Okay, so hopefully I can do this and you can actually see some of it. This caliper bolt goes in the bottom of the caliper down here. And these shims are the fun part to get in there because that's why. I pulled gloves off because that way I can actually feel a lot better of what I'm trying to get into here. And these shims go in between the caliper and the mounting bracket. And basically what it does is these shims um, center, let me turn that up a little bit so we can kind of show you, where the, where the caliper is right here, there's a center line of the caliper and that's basically the middle of the caliper travel. And you want it centered over the center of the uh, rotor right here so that when the, the brake when the caliper applies pressure, it applies it evenly. I'm 
sure this is the wrong size. Oh, me of little faith, how about that? So I'm just going to kind of snug the top one down a little bit, and I want to double check. Well, yeah, that's pretty close to the center. Snug that one down. Yeah, I think I like where that's located. It looks like it's about right. We'll find out when we uh, do the final assembly on the brakes and actually get them on there. Okay, so uh, that's it for this one. We still have to bleed the brakes. We're gonna do that when we do the master cylinder uh, in a future project. And so that this part of it is done though as far as the rear brakes are concerned. Uh, the parking brake cable still needs to be addressed. I think we're gonna have to replace these cables with something different, but that's not a uh, concern at this point because I mean, it's up on the lift, it's not going anywhere. Um, so if it needs a parking brake at this point, we're all in trouble. But uh, I'm gonna still do the brake lines. We're gonna uh, do that part of it when we do the master cylinder in a future episode. And so we're replacing all the brake lines, we're replacing all that good stuff. So we'll get to that. I got a lot of cleanup to do. There's a lot of crispies and whatnot. But anyway, other than that, this project is, uh, is in the books for the rear brakes aspect of it. and. Uh, I want to thank Burke. He was here the other day helping me do some filming and uh, giving me moral support. And uh, if you have not checked out Burke's channel, please do so. You can find him on YouTube at Road Odyssey. And I'll put a link or an at or something in the description below anyway. And then uh, I want to thank my friends Art and Dana over at Spirited Ranchers channel for the duds once again. Um, they sent me a couple of t-shirts. I really appreciate it and uh, it gives me something to, to tear up while I'm working. So anyway, hey, thanks you guys. I appreciate it and I love your content. So if you have not already looked at their channel, they do um, um, some spirit reviews as well as car stuff. And so that's how Art and I got to know each other was because of the car side of it. But I enjoy watching their spirit reviews and things like that too. They're pretty neat history and whatnot that goes along with that. So anyway. Um, enough of that. We'll move on to the next part, which is, hey, thanks to Ben and uh, Jaretta for letting me play with their toy for a while. And uh, I think that concludes this video. So as always, if you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing. Uh, share with your friends if they're into car stuff too. And uh, as always, we'll see you on down the road.